thought was one of the most underrated players in this draft. I think he will be more productive early in his career than Bert Grossman, and that's saying an awful lot because I'm high on Grossman as well. He transferred, didn't he? He transferred from Arizona State. Very uh, you know, highly competitive individual. Probably the toughest player in this draft, along with Darrell Johnson from Syracuse. He didn't play, though, in the pro season. He had some knee problems, went to the combine, and at that point really was only able to show his strength doing some reps. So it took a while to get a fix on him in this post. Well, he had two minor knee injuries, by the way. Arthroscopic knee injuries with cartilage damage and spine now. They could go a lot out. of directions, but we've tried to find a home for Lewis Oliver. Maybe we did. Well, also think trade, you know. That's the other thing they might consider is trying to deal that out. Here's the commission. The Houston Oilers take David Williams, oh. Taco Florida. <laughs> well, like we said, Lewis Oliver. Next uh, up is <laughs> David Williams, tackle uh, from Florida. And before we talk on him, let me ask uh, Tommy and Joe, you guys both sat a long time on, uh, when, waiting for your draft pick. You remember that day, Tom? Well, they did not have the ESPN technology that they have now. But uh, so I had to listen basically on the radio and try to figure out what was going on. But after the first round and a half, I thought I'd go in the first uh, first round or the upper echelon of that second round. When I did not, I left and went and played basketball. I just would not sit there and send myself through that torture that I know Lewis Oliver is going through now. Joe, you were in what, the same round, the fourth? The same round. I went the fourth. You know, they tried to humor me by saying it was it was actually the third pick by Miami, but it was in the fourth round. <laughs> the fact, it didn't make me feel like that. I did the same thing Tommy did. I took off and went and played basketball. And you know, we are a little bit at fault, and I say we in the media and, and the teams call up and, and like like uh, Oliver's gotten and Massey's gotten a few phone calls, they say, would you like to play here? Are you interested in our football team? We're interested in you. And it builds up the hopes of these kids. And they sort of say, oh, God, that's, you know, that's a place I'd like to go. Gee, that's a place I'd like to go. And then all of a sudden, their, their balloons just keep getting pins stuck in them. And it becomes a very tough thing emotionally for them. They'll get over it once they get into camp, once they get a chance to play a little bit. But right now, these kids are on emotional roller coasters. Both, they, you know, the only thing that Tom and I could recommend to them is go find a basketball that's court, right. bang it around, put it out of your mind till it happens, really. Or live in an area that doesn't get cable, so you don't have to <laughs> put yourself through this. Uh, David Williams, a tackle from Florida, has uh, gone to the Houston Oilers. And the Oilers, of course, have built such an outstanding offensive line. And again, they go with some depth as they go with the, the big 6'4 and a half, 295 pounder from Florida, for, uh, started in 45 straight games. Had some back surgery a little more than a year ago at this time, but uh, the guy bench presses over 435 pounds. He's a homegrown product from Lakeland, Florida. And so David Williams now goes to a deep. Uh, but maybe not quite as deep anymore offensive line uh, by the Houston Oilers. It's a team that wants to overpower you on offense and defense and a team that uh, can be going to the playoffs. The Pittsburgh Steelers, by virtue of their Mike Merriweather deal, and the Vikings did sign him, uh, now the have two now. first rounds. The Bears, the Bears are up now. However, they trade their first pick in the first round, this pick, to Miami. Yeah! For Miami's second and third choices in this draft. So the Bears now have Miami's second and third, and Miami has the current choice. And Miami's on the clock with eight minutes to go. That will give uh, another pick, which would be, what, 21 selections in this draft for well, Chicago. We had Lewis Oliver in one there with the yeah, uh, maybe, maybe he's ninth going. pick, and uh, he would make a lot of sense here, obviously, and would fill that need that we talked about opposite Jarvis Williams. Lewis Oliver, defensive back, right. Florida. Miami with a need for defense. First time around. Next up, Los Angeles Rams on a trade previously acquired from Buffalo. Rams are up next. First time through, the Dolphins took Sammy Smith, and you heard all the second guessing beginning. But then Don Shula's organization making that trade. The Bears pick up a second and third round selection. Lewis Oliver is a first rounder. He's going to move downstate. This is a young man who is fast, who has power, who has 4-3 speed. Was a walk-on originally, became a starter as a sophomore. Hits like an offensive, or I should say an outside linebacker, and uh, has coverage of a, uh, a quarterback speed. One thing we talked about, Bob, when Don Shula was evaluating the Super Bowl with Cincinnati and San Francisco, all he talked about was uh, David Fulcher and the impact that he was having with the Cincinnati Bengals. And if you compare Oliver to Fulcher, Oliver's as big but a lot faster. The interesting thing with Miami, if they would have taken Oliver with the eighth pick, they could have come